Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome to this uh, edition of Cricket Happenings where I am going to preview the Australia New Zealand test series that begins at the GABA in Brisbane and this is known as the Vodafone series and well as, as GABA and Brisbane as you know uh, it affords a lot of pace, a lot of bounce uh, and I am afraid uh, the forecast is not so good uh, on the opening day and also for some remaining days. Oh, hopefully the rain stays away so that we have a very good uh, uh, contest here uh, at the GABA in Brisbane. And uh, let's look at the home team uh, Australia. Uh, well, Australia, they have uh, good knowledge of the conditions there. They, are, uh, they can easily gauge the bounce there. They know how the ball bounces there. And uh, I'm sure they'll be uh, very, very uh, eager uh, to start off against New Zealand. Uh, now, as far as Australia is concerned, uh, uh, tomorrow what is going to be very interesting to see is there's going to be uh, pr probably three debutants uh, because Peter Siddle is the only uh, only a mainline pace bowler other than that they don't have Mitchell Johnson who might be today the news said that uh, Mitchell Johnson might be uh, out of the season for weeks so for for uh, for six months or so uh, with his injury and that is not good news for Australia uh, so and they don't have uh, Patrick Cummins the express pace bowler uh, so there's, there's no Shane Watson. So there's a lot of uh, things uh, which uh, for Australia I would say uh, that it is going to be uh, a tough thing as far as bowling is concerned. But they definitely have the reserve talent in place there. Now James Pattinson, if at all he makes his debut, uh, that would be like uh, two brothers playing for uh, 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 di two different countries. This would be happening after 112 years, uh, which is a long time. So James Pattinson uh, will debut for Australia. He's a very good pace bowler, very tall. Uh, hits the deck very well and his brother has already represented England uh, Darren Pattinson uh, now the Mitchell, Mitchell Stark uh, when I seen Mitchell Stark uh, what a good baller he is uh, so he's probably his model is action on uh, on uh, on uh, Michael John uh, uh, Mitchell Johnson uh, and so Michael Johnson and uh, Ben Cutting who also has been impressive uh, as far as uh, Michael Clark, the captain of the Australia, is concerned. Now, if uh, that is going to happen, then there might be three doubles we might be seeing. And there's one more change. Uh, there is no, uh, uh, there is no uh, Shane Watson uh, in the attack. So Shane Watson will be missed. His bowling will be missed. Uh, more than that, his batting would be missed because he brings that all-round, um, all-round uh, mix into the equation there. And uh, so he is going to be missed. Uh, and he has been replaced by the explosive opener David Warner. Now this is a scenario for Australia where David Warner will make his debut and he will be partnering with Phil Hughes. Now David Warner is uh, like an Indian Virendra Sehwag batsman who likes to get on with the game uh, and it would be very interesting to see if uh, David Warner could you know uh, crack a few boundaries and you know uh, get to the uh, neck of the New Zealand bowling uh, because there are also a lot of rookies in the New Zealand team but definitely uh, their attack is more experienced. The only a person uh, there would be Doug Bracewell who has already made his debut, uh, took a five wicket haul and has been looked impressive. He's also just 21 years of old, uh, 21 years age old and uh, uh, there's a lot of potential in this bloke, uh, Doug Bracewell who uh, bowls well. He also uh, bats well as we saw how, what he did against uh, did for uh, New Zealand against Australia A eh? and New Zealand will be very happy because uh, everything the pieces have been coming together and the first two match that they played uh, they showed lots of confidence and lots of aggression and that's what is needed uh, for Australia Usman Khwaja will be coming one drop which um, uh, Michael Clark uh, feels highly about Ricky Ponting will be uh, following him uh, and then uh, we have Michael Clark the captain himself who is in some good form Ponting is also uh, in in some good form Michael Hussey is the one who has to really hit some a great form here against New Zealand. Uh, Brad Haddon. Now the question mark is on Brad Haddon. Now they have persisted with Brad Haddon, which is good because um, Matthew Wade, the wicketkeeper, has been doing very well on the Australian domestic circuit. But Brad Haddon, well, this is his opportunity. If he can cash in, that would be great. But Brad Haddon, as you know, uh, didn't do well against uh, in the Sri Lankan tour. Uh, then um, uh, he had some problems. Uh, as far as his uh, batting is concerned against South Africa but he came good in the final test so that's probably the reason that Brad Haddon has got the nod there and I wish good luck to Brad Haddon he's a very very good player to watch when he gets going uh, Peter said bowling we already spoken about Nathan Lyon whether he's going to get an opportunity the Rata Mospano showed a lot of promise uh, for New Zealand well Martin Guptill and Brendan McClellan will open the innings Brendan McClellan is coming on some very very good form uh, he's looking good. Martin Guptill is also another good bat. So this opening combination will be Martin Guptill and Brendan McCallum. 
Uh, Kane Williamson has shown a lot of promise and uh, he looks to be a real player for the future. He brings this, uh, uh, brings some all-round uh, uh, abilities into the uh, equation there. Ross Taylor will be captaining uh, the New Zealand team and he himself is a great player. Uh, Jesse Ryder, you know what he did, he just broke the, he just equaled the world record for the highest number of sixes hit uh, in a first class innings, in, the, in uh, first class innings uh, and Jesse Ryder equaled Andrew Simons and uh, Graham Napier's record. So he is in some uh, prolific form I would say. Dean Brownlee uh, could get an opportunity, he's also touted to be a good bat. Uh, Daniel Vettori, uh, well he's not the captain but he's going to have it uh, doesn't have more lots of responsibility, so I'm sure Daniel Vettori will be raring to go in this particular match against Australia. Uh, Ree Seng is the wicketkeeper. He's a new wicketkeeper there for New Zealand. New Zealand Ree Seng, uh, so that would be good to see. Uh, Doug Bracewell, I've already spoken about him. Tim Saudi, uh, he's as you know, he's a very improved bowler. He has done very well on the English uh, domestic scene, uh, English um, uh, county scene there, uh, playing for his uh, county there. And Chris Martin, as you know. Uh, is also a very very experienced bowler. So all in all, it looks to be a real tough contest. And as I said, uh, uh, New Zealand probably uh, looking absolutely geared up. Uh, they showed what they could do uh, in the match against Australia. A coming it with lots of aggression and all the batsmen contributing, the bowlers coming to the fore. So things have been looking up for uh, New Zealand. But uh, what is going to be interesting is it is not going to be like the Allen Border field uh, which happened against the uh, when they took on the Australia A. It is going to be much better. There's going to be a lot of pace, a lot of bounce. So it is uh, the toss is going to be very, very vital. There's going to be some conditions which are going to be cloudy, which is going to help the bowlers. And I'm sure whichever captain, whoever uh, wins the toss will probably put the opposition in. Um, and New Zealand uh, looking, this team looking a real, very strong team uh, and probably going to be a very tough contest as far as this uh, Vodafone uh, test series is concerned. Now, um, so th that ends my preview of the Australia-New Zealand uh, first test match. It starts at the Gabba in Brisbane tomorrow. That is on the 1st of December. Um, and, uh, the, and there's also one more match which is going to happen. Tomorrow is going to be the first one-day international, uh, which is going to be played between Pakistan and Bangladesh. As you know, Pakistan um, demolished Bangladesh in the first uh, 2020 match. So they'll be full of confidence and they have been doing well so far, Pakistan. So one-day international record has been good. Uh, for Bangladesh, well, they have something to really uh, prove here uh, on their home ground. This is their best opportunity here. But Pakistan, as I said, are in some peak form right now. The everything, the batsmen, uh, they have a settled batting lineup. They have uh, bowlers who are capable of picking up wickets and they also have a good fielding unit. Uh, probably the fielding could have been improved, but uh, Bangladesh, well, uh, they have to really, really play out of the skins against Pakistan, I would say, because Pakistan are looking very, very stronger um, as far as uh, as far as any departments is concerned compared to Bangladesh. But for Bangladesh, it will be good to see Tamim Iqbal coming back because Tamim Iqbal definitely missed the 2020 match. So that is another match which is coming up tomorrow. Uh, other than that, uh, I don't have anything else to share, cricket fans. Friends and subscribers, your encouragement has been tremendous. Your response has been overwhelming. Uh, I've been enjoying doing this cricket show with you people around supporting me to the hilt. Thank you very much uh, for everything that you've done for this cricket happening show, which makes it go on. Uh, thanks again. And um, I hope to see you all uh, tomorrow uh, with the first day's play report on the first test match between West in, uh, Australia and New Zealand, which starts at the Gabba in Brisbane. Until then... It's your host Ram bidding goodbye. Thank you.